Hi, I'm Scott, your joint pain specialist, and today we're going to be talking about the knee joint. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the meniscus. What is the meniscus, and what is it responsible for? And then more importantly, how do I get to stop hurting? Those questions and more is what we're going to talk about in today's video. So without further ado, let's get to the body. Okay, so here we are looking at the knee of uh, the human leg. And we're looking at specifically all the ligaments and cartilage and everything. So let's zoom in here a little bit. And today we're talking about the meniscus of the knee. Now the meniscus is kind of like a shock absorber, okay? here These are all, it's a ligament, but it's more like a shock absorber. So here are uh, the tendons, more tendons. This is a ligament. Here's ligaments. So tendon is from muscle to bone. That's the attachment point. Um, it's a muscle attachment to the bone. Then a ligament is bone to bone uh, attachments. So if we swing across, way over there. Okay, and let's zoom in. The meniscus, like I said before, is kind of like a shock absorber. Let's do multi-select right there. And right there, and then isolate. Okay, so here's a close look. That right there, this highlighted spot, is the meniscus, specifically the medial meniscus. So that's the meniscus that is closest to the midline of the body. And then here is the lateral meniscus. Now, most of the time, uh, people have the injury usually to the medial meniscus. And uh, the reason why this all happens, there's lots of reasons why it happens, but what happens with the meniscus, again, like I said earlier, the meniscus is a, is a shock absorber. And usually what ends up happening is the muscles are compensating in a way which is causing compression of the knee joint. Now, muscles' primary function is to decompress joints so that there this doesn't have to turn into a problem or anything but because life beats us up and from either stress overuse or injuries well the body creates a compensation which creates muscular uh imbalances and then you eventually have compression in the joints and uh so the meniscus doesn't happen first and then the muscles get dysfunctional it's actually the muscles get dysfunctional first and then you start noticing it when it starts compressing into the joint and everything. So this is the area that we're going to be looking at trying to provide relief by strengthening the muscles that stabilize the knee, okay, which is muscles that attach all the way down to the foot, muscles that attach all the way down to the hip, and all in between. Okay. Now we're going to go over the common causes of it. But... A lot of times I have found that there isn't a really common cause for it. And so, so a lot of times people have unique uh, pathways of how they've gotten to this point of their, their lives or their body journey. And so in order to quickly and effectively correct what's going on with the body, the best thing to do is to get a personalized assessment. And I am doing a personalized assessment for $50. So you pay $50 and... I assess you through a HIPAA compliant app where we take, you take still pictures, you take videos of the movements that I need you to do. I analyze all that and then I send back to you an exercise prescription, things that you need to do daily like mobility work and things like that. And then some strength training work that you're going to do like one, two, three days a week, depending upon why you're reaching out. Um, so if you want to do this as fast as possible, the best way is possible. And in case your pathway of how you got here is a little bit different than the most common causes, then this is what you're going to want to do. But with that said, let's get to these exercises. So these exercises are the most common uh, ways of how we can start relieving that stress in that knee and decompress the knee so you no longer have pain. So... As you can see, we have eight different exercises. And guess what? They're all to be done daily. Look at that. All these exercises to be done daily. Now, it should only take maybe 30-ish minutes, 20 to 30 minutes to do all these. 
And this, it might take you longer in the very beginning just because you're trying to learn these exercises. But as you get used to them over the next two to four weeks that you'll be doing these, then uh, you'll get through these a lot faster. Okay. So let's, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay. So this is heel slides. All right. So the working leg is a straight leg right here and then how it bends. Okay. The point of this is to really focus on the hamstring and a little bit of the glute. Okay. Uh, you want to make sure you're laying down on a flat surface. It's really good to have it like being a hard surface. So like the ground or something like that. Uh, you want to make sure that you're comfortable. So if you need to put like a pillow or a towel or something, and if you need something uh, to support your low back, that's totally fine as well. And then all you're going to do is you're going to put a little bit of pressure. Okay. Not like a crazy amount of pressure. You still want to be able to move. But you want to put a little bit of pressure. Okay. Into that heel. And then you're just going to pull the leg back towards your hip, feeling the back of your leg, that hamstring. Okay. Let's check out that hamstring. Okay. So these are your hamstring muscles. Oh, that's not it. Sorry. And then here. All right. Your uh, semi-membranosis, semi your semi-tendinosis, your bicep femoris, and let's see. Yep, I can't see the short head. Okay. There's also uh, the short head bicep femoris. Anyway, these are the muscles, and as you can see, they attach to what's called the ischial tuberosity of your pelvis. So that's like your butt bone that you sit on. Okay, they attach here, and then they attach on the sides of your, come on, can I get into it? Nope. Right there, your tibia. So it attaches to your tibia on that side, and then your fibula, yep, on that side. Okay? So let's go back to the exercise. And then let's watch the video to see how it's done. Nice, slow, and controlled. Notice that the foot is staying up. Now that is done so that you don't accidentally use these calf muscles here. Okay? So if your foot's pointed down, there's a higher probability that you're going to use your calf muscles to help bend the knee. And as you can see, you see these calf muscles right here, they cross that knee joint and then they attach all the way down to the heel here. Okay. So if you have the heel up, which will shorten these muscles, your calf muscles have the ability to bend the knee. It does it really poorly, but it can still do it. And if you have your foot flexed, you're pointed away, you're going to be taking away the uh, strengthening opportunity for strengthening your hamstring. And then that just creates a different kind of imbalance. So it's really important that you pay attention and just keep that foot elevated like this. We call it dorsiflexed and using that back of that leg. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the next exercise. Supine straight leg raise. Okay. So this is intended to be more of a... Uh, uh, quad exercise, uh, step one, but it's also going to be a little bit of a hip flexor exercise. And uh, so you want to really think about bracing your core. And when I say brace your core, I mean engaging the abdominal muscles that are attaching to your ribs, okay? Engaging those muscles as if you're trying to squeeze those ribs in towards your spine just a little bit, okay? Just to bring some stability there, okay? You'd want to make it so that your torso isn't like moving around or anything. If it's moving around, then uh, we've got other things that's going on that we need to take care of first, okay? Uh, let's go check out the muscles. So, a little bit of hip flexor. Oops, wrong way. A little bit of hip flexor, um, and then also some of the legs. So, these are the quads, rect femoris, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, Okay. Um, so like, so, you know, the main hip flexor that you're going to probably feel is this TFL is what it's called. It attaches to your IT band and crosses the knee joint there. Um, so what you want to think about doing is flexing these muscles here. Uh, you might feel like these are, these are deep as so is my, these are deep, uh, hip flexor muscles, core muscles that attach to your spine and attach to the inside. It's called the lesser trochanter of your, uh, femur. Anyway, uh, you might feel your core working and that's what this is. That's helping move the leg up and down. But the primary thing you want to focus on is this bad boy, the rectus femoris. Okay. So you, so what you want to do 
is you want to engage this quad, okay, the whole thing, all right? It's really easy to, to, to dominate on just once one of those big muscles there. But try to think about the whole thing in the center and the front half of this thigh, keeping the core engaged, and then just lifting the leg up, making sure that that knee stays straight, okay? Don't hyperextend your knee and cause some discomfort or pain. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, just nice and gentle squeezing up. Maybe hold it for a couple seconds and back down. Notice that the foot is still staying straight up, okay? So it's not pointing away. Uh, if you point it away, that'll just cause you to possibly bend the knee. And so you're just not going to be as focused. So keep the foot just straight up in kind of like a neutral position. If you have a hard time doing that, then go ahead and lift the toe up towards the knee. That'll reinforce just trying to work those quads a little bit more. Let's check out that video. Engage the quad first, controlling it up. Yeah, hold it for like a little two count up at the, the top end range, really feeling the quad engaging, doing all, all of it. But then make sure that you feel the quad controlling it back down, okay? It's really easy to just let go as you bring it back down. But you want to strengthen both phases of the movement, the up and the down, with these legs. Because that's what they're designed to do. You know, your, your quads control you as you squat down to sit in a chair or do a squat. And then they also bring you back up as you stand up, all right? So you want to strengthen both directions, the concentric as well as the eccentric. Okay, quad set. So this one, you know, not much to look at here, just looking at someone's knee. But what you're going to do is you want to think about trying to tighten the muscles on this kneecap. Okay, there's this muscle, you can barely make it out right through here. It's called the articularis gnu. Okay, and it it... What it does is it finishes the full extension of the, the knee, like locking out that knee, okay? So you want to think about just kind of like squeezing this part right here, this top part of the knee, um, the whole knee, and holding it for a few seconds, okay? Uh, the longest you want to hold it for would be six seconds. Let's see. Yeah, so it kind of takes up right through here, the articularis gnu. I don't think it's got a, yeah, oh, there it is, the articularis gnu. I'm surprising. Okay, so that's that deep muscle that finishes off the extension of the knee. All right, so let's watch the video, see how it's done. You're not going to see very much, unfortunately. So it's still, and a squeeze, still, squeeze, good, relaxing. You want to hold it for at least a couple seconds, no more than six. Uh, it is beneficial if you hold it for six, um, but there's no reason to hold it for longer than that. Okay, let's go back. Okay, short arc knee extension, okay? So this one's directly going after the quad muscles, the knee extender muscles, okay? So we already looked at those, but let's take a quick look at them again. So basically all these muscles that cross over this joint right here that have the ability to pull it up. So the articulus gnu will help, you know, the uh, vastus medialis, vastus intermedialis, vastus lateralis, the rectus femoris, and that's really it, okay? So those are the muscles. All of these should be engaged in doing that. So really think about from the top of the leg, your femur, which is where it connects to, all in this front half, okay, all the way down to the knee. So don't think about just flexing this outside or just the inside. You want to think about the whole thing as best as you can, all right? So you're comfortably laying down using like a foam roller. If you don't have a foam roller, you can use like a couple of pillows or like a rolled up towel or something. So don't think you just have to go buy a foam roller. Um, but there's benefit to having a foam roller. Anyway, you're going to put it underneath your knees. It should be really nice, comfortable, supportive. Use a towel if you need to. And then it's very simple. One leg at a time. You want to think about those quad muscles shortening, okay? Let's look at this again. So you see these muscles here? In order to straighten the knee, those muscles at the, at the attachment points from up top here and then all the way down here, Okay, they attach to the top of around this area and the bottom of this area. You want to think about them getting shorter to cause your knee to straighten. Okay, with the leg straight like this, that's the shortest position for the leg, for these quad muscles, right? When the knee bends, they lengthen. 
All right, that's what allows them to 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 bend, and then what straightens the knee is the those muscles shortening. Okay, so you want to think about engaging these quads first, and then thinking about those two the end points. You know, up here in the top of the thigh and the bottom of the of the thigh where the knee is coming together to cause your leg to your lower leg to lift up and extend. Let's watch the video. Good. When you get to the top, it's really good to have a two count hold. Now make sure again, you want to control it down with these quads and you're never resting these quads. When it comes down, you're not relaxing. You know, you, you want to, you want to pause at the bottom for like a two count, still keeping that quad tight and then squeeze the quad even tighter to cause your leg to straighten and hold the two count up top. Okay. All right. Now we're going into some mobility stuff. All right, some hamstring stretching, okay? So this is a seated hamstring stretch. Now you don't have to be on the floor like this. This is the ideal position, but it, sometimes it's just, sometimes our bodies just can't get into the position and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. What's important is that you just get into a position where you can stretch it out, okay? So if you have the ability to lay down, your leg is straight, you can be upright and kick your knee in and everything's fine, then great, go ahead and do that. But if you can't, there's nothing wrong with that. That's okay. You can, might have to have this leg extended out. That's totally fine. This knee need, might need to be bent. That's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Uh, you just want to be, you want to be comfortable. It shouldn't be stressful to get into that position. If you can't get down into a position like this, you can be on like a chair and scoot your butt forward a little bit so you're kind of like on the edge there and your leg is hang, hanging off and straight, okay? Make sure you don't slide off the chair or anything like that. But you can do the same kind of thing, but seated upright on a chair and that'll be less stressful and much easier to, to perform this type of movement, okay? So let's check out those hamstrings again so we can see it, okay? So these muscles right here, see how they're attached? That's, that, that's the, the pelvis, okay? This, this uh, attachment point right here where it's all connected to, that is the ischial tuberosity, all right? And they come down and attach to the lateral and medial epicondyle of the tibia and fibula. Anyway, so these are the muscles that you want to feel thinking about them lengthening. All right, let's check out that exercise. Let's watch the video. Nice and gentle. Think about engaging the core to provide support. It's a good idea to also think about trying to squeeze the quad, not crazy hard or anything like that, but just having it engaged, okay? How the human body moves is in order for something to lengthen and stay lengthened, that means something has to be shortening and get stronger in a shortened position, okay? So on this, so the, the front side of the body here, these muscles are all shortening, which will cause a lengthening back here. And there'll be a lengthening back here as well, lengthening the glutes as well. Um, but the main thing is focusing on feeling the hamstring lengthen, okay? And what will help reinforce that and make it last longer so that it turns into a uh, normal movement is if you feel these muscles all pulling you into this stretch position. Don't think about just letting gravity kind of like pull you forward and relax you in that position and just feel this stretching. That's not going to make any kind of permanent changes. What will make permanent changes is doing this, but engaging everything on the front side of the body to help pull you forward. Okay. If I want to be able to bend my elbow, that means this gets shorter, the other side gets longer. All right. It, this, the same rule applies everywhere in the body. You have to focus on one side getting stronger while the other side is getting longer, okay? One side is shortening while the other side is getting uh, longer. All right, calf stretch. Okay, you can use a chair, you can use the wall. It really doesn't matter. The big thing here is you want to make sure that your feet are in line with your hips, okay? So if you have really wide hips, it's e sometimes it's easy for you to have your feet kind of like on the inside of your hips. You want to have them aligned out, aligned with your hips, okay? Then one foot's forward, one foot's back. You want to make sure that this heel stays flat and that you're engaging your glute, okay? Really think about squeezing that glute Think about squeezing that thigh also, the whole thigh, and then you're going to just lean your body weight forward just like this, okay? Notice how the arms are straight and then bending, coming in. You want to do the same kind of thing, okay? And you can have your hands up on the wall straight, and then you're leaning and you're bringing your elbows towards the wall, bending the elbows, okay? But again, really think about driving that heel into the ground, 
squeezing that glute, hamstring, thigh, abs are a little tight, and then just leaning forward just like that. Okay, let's check out those muscles in the calves. All right, so here are those calf muscles. That's the gastrox. Let's see if I can, boom. That's the soleus right there. Those are the main ones that you're gonna feel. That's the plantaris, the popliteus, but you won't really feel those. You might, but if you feel anything, it's gonna be that one. Um, there you go. So those are the muscles that you should be feeling. Let's watch the video, see how it's done in case you've never done one of these uh, before. Yeah, thinking about keeping those muscles engaged, squeezing through here, and that's just gonna help you pull and lengthen into it, okay? Very simple. All right, prone hip extension. So hip extension. Um, this is gonna be both a hamstring and a glute exercise, okay? The primary function of your glute is actually Zoom out. This muscle right here, that's your glute max. Okay. Its primary function is when these muscles shorten, right, is to pull that leg back. Okay. But these muscles also have the ability to pull the leg back this direction. All right. So it's going to be twofold. You're going to feel both of those muscles working. Try to really think about this butt muscle, though, this gluteus maximus uh, doing most of the work as, as best as you can. This will work no matter what, okay? Let's check it out. So laying comfortably. Uh, putting If you're on the floor, which I recommend, having your hands on top of each other and then putting your forehead on your hands That'll create space for your nose so you're not smashing your nose into the floor because that's not comfortable. And it's really good to be uh, to have like a neutral spine position whenever you're doing these kind of exercises like this, okay? So all you're going to do, if you're going to be, your legs are going to be straight, everything's going to be lengthened, you want to think about engaging those hamstrings by pointing and reaching the leg kind of like out from your body. It's like you're trying to like push your leg out of your pelvis. Engaging that glute and then lifting the leg up in the air. Something that helps me sometimes is by is thinking about trying to push my pelvis into the floor. But I don't want to rotate, no twisting, staying square onto the floor. But thinking about like I'm I'm trying to push my hip into the floor to cause my leg to lift up. Okay, that's just a, a little trick that I do that seems to to make it um, more specific and isolating uh, that movement and getting a better contraction of the muscles. Let's check out that video. Perfect. You notice the leg doesn't come crazy high, right? I mean, it's coming up off the ground a decent amount, but it's not coming crazy high. And the reality is, is the glute can only really push your leg back and your hamstrings back uh, about five degrees. Otherwise, then your low back takes over to try to rotate your pelvis to create more space. But there's only about five degrees of space for your femur to even lift up from your uh, from your pelvis, okay? So it's not gonna be a crazy amount. And if you're having issues and you're, you're got weaknesses, which is why you're here, right? You got weaknesses. So it wouldn't be surprising if you had like a, a degree or two, okay, off the ground, even if you might you might not even be able to get it off the ground. And that's okay. You know, it's, it's all about just engaging the muscles and trying to do the movement without feeling any kind of like bad stuff in your in your low back, in your calf, that you're feeling what you're supposed to be feeling. And if that means all that you can do is just kind of like engage the muscle and act as if you're trying to lift it up, that's fine. Just hold it for about six seconds in that case, okay? And for each repetition. And then you will you will very quickly be able to get off the, uh, the ground. It would be very surprising how fast that will happen. Okay, heel dips, all right? The video it doesn't do a good job of really showing how to do this. So it's really similar to the very first hamstring exercise that I showed you with the, the sliding the heel, okay? We're putting pressure into um, the ground through the heels. That's what you're gonna be doing here, but how it's gonna look like is you're gonna, you're just gonna 
lift your toes up into the air. And when that happens, you want to push those heels down into the ground, really feeling the back of those thighs, those hamstring muscles again, contracting. You're not going to want to lift up and bridge up. That's not the point of this exercise. Uh, the point of this is to just strengthen those hamstrings in this knee bent position. Okay. We've already seen the hamstrings before. I don't think it's something you need to see again. Uh, again, the reason why you're wanting to bring the toes up is so that the calves don't try to engage and help out. Okay. You want to try and get those out of the game. Let's watch the video. So you're going to see the toes come up, but then that's when you apply forces down to engage the back of these thighs. Toes come up, squeezing down, as if you're trying to bend the knees, pushing them down. You might feel your glutes engaging, that's okay, but you really wanna focus on the feeling the, the back of the legs uh, engaging. We okay, try to get this as dominant as you possibly can, getting those back of those thighs. Okay? All right. So uh, every single day, with the heel slides, you want to do three sets of 10, rest about eh, 30 seconds, no, no more than that. You can even get away with like 10 second rest in between each one. Uh, same thing with the supine straight leg. Okay, three sets of 10. Now this is each leg, okay, not total, like each leg. So it'll be six total sets on this one. This is gonna be six total sets for the, the quad sets. You wanna do these one leg at a time. Three sets here of 10, same kind of thing, one leg at a time, don't do both legs. We're not ready for bilateral stuff at the same time. Uh, then just one set of, of the uh, stretches. You're going to do three repetitions of reaching for about 30 seconds. Same thing here, about 30 seconds. Then you want to do three sets of uh, 10 with the hip extension, and then three sets of 10 for the heel dig digs. This is going to be together at the same time. This one's going to be one at a time. Okay? Okay, phase one is complete with the meniscus. Now we've gone over... What is the meniscus? What is it responsible for doing? And how it can start the process of healing so that it's no longer causing aches and pains. But stay tuned. In the next four weeks, in four more weeks, I should say, we're going to come back and do phase two of rehabilitating the meniscus. So come back, subscribe, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.